So let's go through all the layers and the masks that we used to create the wafer. So let's take a look at the cross section of the very simple wafer that we created. Um, this wafer consisted of an N type of a P type substrate in which we created an N well, and then we created uh, N plus regions either for the source and the drain of the NMOS, so that this is an NMOS, or for the body contact of the well. And we also created P plus areas for the source and the drain of the PMOS, and we created a P plus area through which uh, the substrate can contact ground. So this is a metal wire, uh, which is obviously connected to ground, and this is a metal wire, which is obviously connected to VDD. How do I know that it is obviously connected to ground or VDD? Because these are the wires that con connect the well and substrate contacts, which we know have to go to ground and supply. Um, also, this kind of gives me an idea that this is the source of the PMOS and this is the source of the NMOS. This is the gate of the NMOS. This is the gate of the PMOS. And um, thus, this is the drain of the NMOS and this is the drain of the PMOS and they are shorted together using a metal wire in metal one. And then we contact this node using a uh, wire made of metal two. So when we think about how we created this, we created this in layers. So each mask was used to create all the features on a certain level of the wafer. And if we think of the order in which we made the layers, it's a little bit different from the order of how the layers are arranged from bottom to top, but it's more or less follows the same logic. So we start with the well. This was the first thing we uh, made using the fusion. Then we created the uh, field oxide and, and the thin oxide. And then we created the polysilicon gates using uh, chemical vapor deposition. Then we used the P plus, plus mask to create uh, P plus areas, the N plus mask to create N plus areas. Then we used a, a mask to create contacts between metal one and uh, diffusion and polysilicon. And then we deposited metal one, then we used the mask to create via one, and then we deposited metal two. So we are moving from bottom to top with a specific exception, which is that we create the gates first and then we implant the N plus and P plus regions. And the reason we did this was to have a self-aligned process in which a slight mismatch between the poly and the ion implantation masks will not lead to loss of transistor action, but will lead to only a change in the area of either the drain or the source. So if we look at the masks that we use to create all these layers, uh, the masks all describe things that happen to the same piece of real estate. So we're talking about the area of a chip. In this case, it's an extremely simple chip because it contains only two transistors. But in reality, we will be talking about a mask that covers an area containing millions, if not billions of transistors. But in any case, um, the first mask, for example, will create uh, all the N wells. The second mask will create all the active areas. The third mask will create all the poly areas. Uh, the fourth mask will create all the P plus. Fifth mask, all this, uh, the N plus. The sixth mask will, will create all the contacts. And the seventh mask will create all the uh, metal one layers. The eighth mask will create all the via ones. And the ninth mask will create all the metal two layer. So because all these masks cover the same area, it's kind of tempting to put them uh, on top of each other and see what results from this. But if we try to put them on top of each other, uh, they are all black and white, so they will not give us an indication of anything useful. So instead, what we do is we color code each of these masks and then we put them on top of each other. So we're going to color code the uh, well mask so that the transparent area is yellow. And so this in indicates areas where we have uh, a, uh, an N well. We're going to color code the active mask so that active areas, which can contain thin oxide, are colored in green. We're going to color code the poly mask in red 
so that areas that contain polysilicon are red. We're going to color code the select masks so that they are dotted lines. The contact masks are going to be uh, black squares where there are contacts. The metal one mask is going to be blue where there are uh, metal wires. The via masks are going to also contain black squares where there are vias, which means that they are exactly identical to the color code of the contact mask. The Metal 2 mask is going to have a different color from the Metal 1 mask, but the VIA 2 mask is also going to consist of black squares. So notice that the contact and all VIA masks have the same color code. While this color coding allows us to put all of the uh, masks on top of each other, and it also relieves us of thinking whether the feature is formed from the transparent areas or the opaque areas of the mask. It just color codes the feature that you want to create at a specific step. So when we put them on top of each other, what we get is something called the layout. And the layout is simply the top view of the chip as you want it to be fabricated. So this represents what the designer sees if they look at the top view of the chip. Of course, this is an idealistic case because the fabricated chip is going to look a lot different, but this is what we want in an ideal situation from the fabrication flow. Now, for example, this is the area where we will have the, uh, the end well. Uh, this is uh, the, the wire forming uh, the polysilicon. Uh, this is a metal one wire. This is a metal two wire. Uh, as we talked about all uh, the uh, contact and via masks, they will all contain black squares, regardless of which layer we are talking about. But it's easy to, to tell which layer we are talking about, because if the black square is creating a contact between a metal uh, one wire and active or uh, polysilicon areas, then this is a contact. If it's creating a, a contact between a metal 2 and a metal 1 wire, this is a via 1. If it's creating a contact between metal 2 and metal 3, this is a via 2 and so on. So there's no distinction between uh, the color code of these uh, contacts because it, it's actually easy to tell from context. So we find that the layout is actually the summation of the masks that we used in fabrication. But in reality, the layout is the input to the fabrication process. It kind of works the other way around. We give the fab the layout and the fab uh, derives the masks, the photo masks from the layout. So they take this layout and they break it down into uh, all these masks. And then they uh, turn the masks into black and white and then they uh, print them using photo mask printing. So in fact, layout is the um, end product of the design flow. This is what the designer ends up with and where, what the people who fabricate start with. And so uh, in module eight, we will talk about how it is exactly that we produce a layout that can then be used in fabrication.